I've started a fire in the rain on a camping trip when, you know, it just started pouring, but I had like a lighter and, you know, newspaper or, or like the, the ready to go logs and stuff. But from the landscape without, I don't want to say cheating, but like either with a lighter or a ferrocerium rod or fire steel or something like that, how do you get a fire going? And when you look around, everything's kind of wet. It's, it's challenging, but it's not impossible. So uh, we're going to go over how to make a fire in the rain. Stay with me. What's up, warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops and you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just like take a walk around and anything that like sounds like, um, when I step on it, like the thickness of a pencil or pencil lead is even better, all the way up to like pinky or thumb size. I'm gonna grab like, I don't know, maybe about this much. I'm gonna try and fill up my shemag with it and I'm gonna bring back my smalls. So remember that like to get a fire going, you really need surface area of dry material. So while a lot of this stuff that's on the ground dead or even hanging from the branches, like the, the trees that are kind of dead and the branches that are dead, the stuff that snap, crackle and pops really easily that stuff is, it might be wet on the outside, but it's dry on the inside. Especially the small stuff that's like pencil lead up to pencil, that's gonna be the first stuff that catches. I know there's a, a birch tree back there, so I'm gonna just grab like the paper thin bark, like the, like, I don't wanna rip off the bark, I don't wanna hurt the tree, but I wanna peel off like the paper thin stuff, maybe the size of a, because it's wet, and because it's raining, maybe the size of a, of a softball or a, you know, I don't know, grapefruit, softball, cantaloupe, something like that. So I'm gonna look for smalls, grab the smalls, grab the birch bark and be right back. So check this out. This is a perfect example of what I'm looking for. All this stuff that snaps off really easy and it's got the, this is like the size of a pencil down to pencil lead. And the tree is just full of it. It's so, uh, the tree is, is pretty much dead to begin with. And the branches that are hanging, you can just tell like super dry, super, super dry. It's gonna go up nice and quick. Anything that feels like it's, it's kind of hard to snap off, I don't take. If it comes off gently, that means it's very dead. If it's like, like there's some pliability to it and it feels like it's, gonna, it's not gonna come off, then I leave it. That way if the, if the tree has a chance coming back, it'll come back and I'm not hurting it. The stuff that's coming off is not, if it snaps off that easy, it's already very dead and not coming back. So a lot of times, not just looking on the ground, but finding the dead trees with the dead hanging branches that snap, crackle, pop right off. That's the stuff that, man, you pull off a branch kind of like closer to the trunk or closer to one of the bigger branches, and you're gonna get the pinky size, pencil, and pencil lead all in the same snap. I'm gonna try and always look for stuff that's gonna be about the size from my, the end of my finger to the fold of my elbow. Uh, it'll just be easier for when I make the fire lay to get the thing going. All right, so I brought back a bunch of birch bark and it, most of it's paper thin. Of Some of it is a little bit thicker. Um, that's only because I, I know that I can get this stuff started and I hope that this will help this get started, which will help this stuff get started. I always have a film container of uh, cotton balls like mushed with uh, Vaseline into them. Cause it, it, watch this, man. You get stuck with a lighter and some Vaseline. Look how easy that goes up. That, that's what you should have in your pack or your kit, or even if you had a first aid kit uh, with some Vaseline, it comes like, like ketchup packets um, and a cotton ball or a piece of cotton off your shirt or, or, or your shemag or your bandana or whatever. Another thing I always have with me is um, fat wood and fat wood works very similar. So you, you shave it into like um, little feathers, right? And then you could hit that either with a lighter or a um, ferrocerium rod. So I have my ferro rod in my pocket. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I take my ferro rod and if I get some really good shavings, you could hit it with a lighter. And look how fast that goes up too. And you don't use the whole stick. I mean, you could use the whole stick, but why would you? It's, it's a valuable resource when you could just shave feathers off of it and get it going or you kind of like get some sawdust off of it and get that going. And same thing with a lighter, look how easy that goes up. Now with a ferrocerium rod, similar thing, 
you're just gonna hit and that'll help it catch but we're gonna try to uh, do this don't put it out with your hand Davey <laughs> get that out of here. Hey, that was kind of stupid. That was stupid too. Okay, good enough, whatever. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smalls and I'm going to show you this in two parts. So I'm going to put this over here and I'm going to take my smalls in no particular order. I'm just going to kind of like, make sure I don't lose my stuff. Put that on the side. So again, like it's got all of the components it needs in one in one handful and I didn't go too crazy because I don't want to make a big fire I want to be able to do this show you put it out and leave again it's rain it was just raining a lot now it just stopped again but I know there's a lot of rain on the way which is why I'm kind of doing this this fast so the way I make a fire light is I put it into a V and ideally I would prefer it like if I the wind is kind of coming this way right now, so I'm going to turn the V so that the wind will kind of naturally go into it. When I light this inside of here, the wind kind of blows it into the V, which helps the this rise and heat and get the stuff that's wet on the outside, but very dry on the inside. The stuff that came down off the trees isn't all that wet. The stuff on the ground is significantly wet, but the stuff that was in the trees, not too bad. Okay, so again, this, this very fine stuff. The, the next part is making like the letter A. So what I do is, I put the, the crisscross of the A over the top so I can kind of roll it back. I'm not gonna do that yet because I want to show you how I do this and then I'll, we'll make it work. Okay, this is a little bit wet, but I'm gonna try and process it so I get like a, some very, very, it's very fine to begin with, but I want to get it even, the thing that's really going to catch is the, the most, all I'm doing is like grinding it up in my hands, almost into like a powder, okay? Remember if we try it three times and it doesn't work, we adjust our tinder bundle, we adjust our grip on the knife, our grip on the fire steel, There we go. There we go. Now, we put more birch bark on top. We want to be careful we don't want to put this out. We can start getting our smalls going. Our finest smalls. Even the birch bark that was on the tree, some of it was, was vet, wet and some of it was dry. So I just grabbed the dry stuff. The trick is to get the thinnest stuff going. Fire loves chaos. As soon as it starts to climb through the top, you could add more material. And there's your fire. Sometimes when you go to snap it, the, the finest stuff or the smallest stuff is what goes flying. The rain's coming, it's coming again, man. Oh. But once we get this going and we have like uh, some heat, some fuel, I got bigger sticks next to me. Plenty of stuff to throw on top. I didn't make a fire ring. I just kicked the leaves out of the way because again, I'm going to stomp this out in a second. The ground is pretty wet and it's about to be very, very wet. So typically if I was going to be staying here all night, I dig a bit of a hole. I get a bunch of rocks. I put the rocks in a circle. But this, uh, and there you go, there's your fire. I'm going to put this out. I'll enjoy it for a few minutes. See how long it lasts in the rain. Oh my God. 
It's going. In the rain. In the rain. And the fire, in case you can't tell, is not under my cover. I could bring it in. That's why I kind of set this up nice and high to keep a low fire. But uh, I didn't say do it, make a fire under a, <laughs> a tarp. I said make a fire in the rain. That does feel nice. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I could hear the rain coming in waves. Very cool. And again, once you get your fire going to this point, you just start going with larger fuel. Uh, you know, you, I have a video on how to process, you know, branches into smaller, 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 and how you even get some of that stuff down to this size, even if you couldn't find this, but you, you could always find this. I will call this a sustainable fire. It is burning hot enough, long enough, high enough, that I could add more to it to make it bigger. Um, I have plenty more smalls to add to it if I wanted to get the coals going to keep it going, but that's not the purpose of this. Um, if you have some better way to get a fire going in the rain, I'm curious because I, I love firecraft. It's such an important skill and I'm always looking for better ways to do it and better ways, to, even the stuff that I already know how to do, there's gotta be a better way to do it. And ultimately it comes with practice, you know? So, uh, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button and the little thing where it says all notifications so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find me on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.